Hey, welcome back. In this video, we will learn about one of the most powerful Python libraries, the request library. If you want to programmatically send requests to any of the API endpoints or any URLs, this is the right tool for you. And as a Python developer, you must know how to use this library because in most of the projects, you will definitely come across a situation where you want to access the API endpoints and get the response from it. So what is a request library and why it is used? Well, the request library lets you make HTTP requests programmatically, meaning you can send the HTTP requests right from your code. It's like your Python code acting as a browser, you know, sending get request or post request and receiving responses. So whether you're calling an API, uh, scraping some data or sending information to the server, this library makes it all simple. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to work with this request library. Okay, let's start with installing the request library. The way we install this request library is very simple. Just run a pip install request. Okay, I'll just copy it and I'll go to my VS code. And here in the terminal, I will just uh, paste it. Pip install request. Okay, so the moment you run this command, the request library should be installed in your system. In my case, it is showing me a requirement already satisfied because request library uh, is already installed in my system. Okay, in your case, it should get installed if it is not yet installed. Okay, so first thing after you install this request library, you have to go to your file, which is in my case, uh, API request.py. It's a, a test file. Uh, so first thing you have to import it. Okay, import request. So this is how you uh, import this request library so first i'll show you how to send the get request so i'll just write here get request to send a request to any url endpoint or api endpoint we need that api endpoint right so right now we don't have any api endpoint that's why i'm going to use this json placeholder so this json placeholder is a website which provides the fake uh, apis and responses Okay, so you can go to json placeholder dot type code dot com or you can simply go to Google and search for uh, json placeholder. You will be landed into this website. You can simply scroll down and uh, try the sample code here. So this is actually a, a JavaScript code, but in our case, we want to write it in Python. So if you want to see what kind of uh, uh, response you get, you can simply uh, run the script and you will see the response like this. Okay, so this is actually a uh, test data or you can say demo data all right so this is the endpoint uh, we need to hit okay so it is uh, it also gives us uh, something called blocks you can go to guides and uh, not blocks it is post okay so let's try to uh, hit this endpoint programmatically using request library so let's go back to this code and let's try to send a get request so i'll say requests dot get Okay, request not get, and this is where your uh, endpoint will go. Okay, so let me copy this endpoint. Um, yeah, here is uh, the endpoint. So this endpoint will list down all the resources. So in this case, the resources means the blog post. Okay, so let me copy this. I'll copy and go back to this code, paste this link here. So whatever response this API endpoint will give we will store that inside a response you know response variable the response is equal to request dot get and this is where your uh, api endpoint will go okay so now let's try to see what is inside the response okay i'll uh, you know i'll just uh, print this response dot status code okay response dot status code will give me the uh, you know the status code maybe it is a uh, uh, 200 201 404 anything it can be but in our case since this is a get request uh, we we will likely get the 200 re response so let's save this file and uh, let me clear it up and let's run python 3 api request dot py okay so i get the response code which is 200 so what if i want to actually see the blog post so what I'll do is I'll simply say uh, response dot JSON response dot JSON. Let's save this and let's run it. And you see so many data has been pulled from this uh, uh, API endpoint, right? So if you want to see this properly, uh, I'll just uh, show you one website. You can go to JSON Weaver. Okay, JSON Weaver. 
and here this is the website jsonweaver.stack.who of course there are other tools also but i like this one just copy everything from your response and you paste it here inside this text tab okay just paste and click on this weaver and you will see all the response has been listed down here right so this is the zeroth index and you see in, in the zeroth index user one id is one and title and body and two and everything is here right up until uh, there are i think 100 data right so this is how you uh, use a get request to list down all the resources or the blog post but you know what this is giving me all the data right but what if you want to filter down this data like for example if you want to get only the data of a user id1 right so in that case we use something called uh, filtering in a request so we'll take the example filtering the data so to filter the data by user id in this case uh, you can simply pass the uh, query parameters to your endpoint so i will just copy this same thing okay I'll just copy this same thing and i will comment this code i just I don't want to run this code every time every time i uh, run it here okay, i'll just clear it up and to this endpoint this method will be uh, get request because we of course want to get the data right so here we pass something called params okay param parameters or params or anything you want so in this params we pass the user id user id okay user id colon two or three or four or anything you want okay so how do i know this is the params user id i should use if you go back here the the response you see here is user id right so this is the user id right otherwise if you want to get the data of a person whose id is uh, two right you can also uh use id is equal to two so it is just like you know if you know sql there's a query select star from a table name where uh, id is equal to one right so that's what we are doing here that where clause is going uh, as a query parameter user id is equal to two so once we have the params we can simply pass this params here inside this get method okay so you'll, you'll simply say params simply pass params here and this request will automatically work okay so i'll say print response okay so if you just print response it will print the object okay so if you want i can show you that you see this response the with the status code if you write uh, status code and you'll get just a status code but i want the data right so what i'll do i'll just simply say uh, response dot json and now if i run this and you see i got all the blog posts that belongs to the user id 2 okay so if i want to see this properly i can copy this and i go back and go to text you can either refresh it or just uh, control all uh, delete and go back to weaver and you can see there are 10 data okay so these are all the data that was provided by this uh, json placeholder dot typeicode.com okay so that's how you uh, filter the data and what if you want to you know send the data to the server right for example if you want to save the data in the database so that we will have to do using the post method okay so let's see how to use this post method let me again clear it up i'll write post so to send the data to the server uh, we need the data right so i can say you know data is equal to uh, the data should be uh, in a json format uh, title colon hello and uh, i'll need body colon maybe some string hello world and uh, if i want to store the user id right user user id 101 because in this demo data there is no user with the user id uh, 101 that's why i'm just uh, creating a new user id with the id 101 okay now we have the data and now i will say response 
रिस्पॉन्स इज इक्वल टू दिस टाइम रिक्वेस्ट डॉट पोस्ट ओके रिक्वेस्ट डॉट पोस्ट एंड दिस रिक्वेस्ट विल टेक दिस यू आर एल एंड पॉइंट पेस्ट एंड कॉमा इट इट विल ऑल्सो टेक द डेटा ओके सो डेटा विल बी इन जेसन फॉर माइट एंड वी विल प्रोवाइड दैट डेटा सो नाउ इफ यू ट्राई टू प्रिंट रेस्पॉन्स डॉट जेसन रेस्पॉन्स डॉट जेसन एंड ऑल्सो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू शो यू समथिंग एल्स हियर रेस्पॉन्स डॉट स्टेटस कोड हियर रेस्पॉन्स डॉट स्टेटस कोड एंड रेस्पॉन्स डॉट जेसन एंड बिफोर आई रन इट आई विल जस्ट कमेंट दिस कोड आउट save it and run it again okay now you can see a uh, response dot status code and uh, this has returned 201 so this 201 means created response so this means the new post has been created okay so the data will be uh, this this is the data that we got from the server okay but uh, you know what this is a fake data right so this has not uh stored in the database uh, of uh, json placeholder it just shows you that the data has been created okay but in the real life if you uh, send this request to any other endpoint then the data will get stored in the database and one more thing in real life endpoints you cannot just hit the endpoint just using this request dot post uh, like that because most likely your server is uh, secured with the something called authorization okay you will have to uh, send the authorization header with your endpoint okay that's when you will be able to show the data in the database or access the data uh, from the server so i'll show you how to use this uh, authorization header or in fact how to send the headers using this request library with the endpoint so let's say we uh, we have some headers like this headers is equal to in json we will say authorization authorization so there are multiple authorization methods but uh, mostly we use uh, something called bearer tokens okay so if the authorization method is bearer token then you will have to pass the bearer token so the bearer token will look something like this it will be a series of numbers letters and special characters you can simply obtain the bearer token from the destination website by following their documentation and then you can use it but remember one thing whenever you want to use uh, bearer tokens you always have to uh, write bearer in front of your token and also you will have to uh, pass the content type content type so content type will be application json so this will be our header and now you can simply pass this here okay so just paste it and uh, response is equal to request dot uh, get let's uh, try to you know fetch something request dot get and uh, this will be the endpoint and uh, instead of saying json is equal to data we can simply say headers is equal to uh, headers okay headers is equal to this header okay so right now this is our dummy token but in real life if you want this api endpoint to get the data for you then you'll have to pass the correct uh, authorization header like the bearer token so before i wind up this uh, video i just want to show you something called error handling because sometimes we get errors when sending the request so in that case what you have to do is we have to uh, handle the errors gracefully so the way we handle the errors in python we mostly use try and accept block so inside the try block we can try to uh, you know try to send the request like uh, request dot get uh, maybe i will just say https i'll just try to replicate the scenario of the no internet okay so what if uh, you don't have the internet and you're accessing the endpoint right so in that case uh, you should get the error response is equal to request dot get this endpoint okay just consider this is the endpoint i'm just uh, going to ratanke.com now what if you cannot go to ratanke.com maybe because you don't have the internet or this ratanke.com is not working so in that case you have to get the error okay you have to catch the uh, error in the except block so it will be request dot exceptions dot request exception okay request exception as e as e 
I will print um, error error colon then you can pass this uh, error like this uh, if I print the response like this response like this this will work uh, you get the response 200 because ratank.com is working but now what if uh, this site is not working maybe my internet internet connection is down let me disconnect the Wi-Fi and let's now try to uh, access this okay now you see error okay this error is being printed uh, from whatever I have written here and this E is printing this actual error HTTPS uh, connection pool host ratank.com port 443 fail to resolve right so because it was unable to connect to ratank.com the reason is there is no internet and one more piece of trick I want to show you here always use timeout okay always use a timeout uh, here timeout is equal to uh, maybe 10 seconds or 5, te five seconds uh, why we are using timeout here is because uh, sometimes the API endpoint will take a lot of time to respond right so if you don't want to keep waiting for the response then you can set a specific time uh, maybe wait for 10 seconds and if you don't get the response within this 10 seconds just go out of this try block so this way your app will not keep loading forever okay so that's why you always try to use this uh, timeout method if you think the server is slow so that's how you use a request library to work with the API endpoints. If you're a beginner and want to learn Python programming, then you can watch this crash course. It's Python for beginners with assignments. You'll get a lot of assignments in this crash course. Okay, so if you have learned anything new in this video, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any doubts, feel free to ask me in the comments below. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.